Hey everybody, this is a intro video for uh, Pico 8 for Total Noobs. So if you have never done any game development, this is going to be a good video for you. I'll explain everything as I go. Uh, but this will just be kind of an introduction to how Pico works and kind of some uh, major concepts behind making a game in Pico 8. So uh, when you first open Pico 8, you have this screen and this is like your console. So there are different commands and everything that you can type in. Uh, if you type help, you get a list of those commands. You can load files, save files, run files from here. But really, this is kind of like the runtime uh, mode of Pico. So if you're going to run your game or if you're going to put any commands in, that kind of happens on this screen. Now, uh, if you hit escape, that switches to your kind of creative mode. And there are five tabs. The first one is your code. And that's these little brackets up here. The second one is your sprite editor, where you can make art. The third one is your map editor, where you can take that art and you can place it on a grid, uh, a tile system to make a map. The fourth one is your sound editor, and you can make different sounds. And then we have our uh, music editor, our tracker, and this is where you can combine different sounds together and make your own music all here in Pico. So we're gonna just dive into a couple of these right now so that you can get your head around kind of just making a game and kind of how that works basically. So um, again, this is for total noobs, so I'm gonna explain everything as we go. The very first thing that we need to do is figure out what our, our main functions are for our game loop. The game loop is just what happens uh, all the time for a game, like when the game is running. So um, a function is just an event, something that happens. And there are three main events that happen all the time just automatically in Pico. The first one is init. And what init does is as soon as the game runs, it runs the code that's under init. And how you type a function in Pico is function space, whatever the function's name is. And for init, it's actually underscore I N I T. And then after the function name, there are two parentheses. So function init with parentheses. And then after that, we have an end. And then in between this function and this end, that's where the code actually happens. And it's good practice to tab in one uh, for whatever code you want. So in this function init, we can say print. And then I'll make parentheses and then whatever we want to print. So I'll put this in quotes. Hello world. And then end our quotes and end our parentheses. Print is a command that just types something on screen. So um, a lot of these commands have a uh, word and then whatever you want to kind of tell this command to do goes inside of these parentheses. So to run this, we set we say control R. And as we say control R down here at the bottom of our commands, it says hello world. So we actually wrote some code and now it's putting that to use. It's actually working, right? To go back to the editor, I'll hit escape. And that's great. So we'll go ahead and get rid of print hello world. And now we have this function init. Now, all that will happen is this will run once. So um, this is really good to kind of set things up. So if we want to um, set up the properties of a character, if we want to set a color for something, um, usually variables. So variables are just like in algebra, you know, X equals something, and you can kind of bring in a new value uh, into something later. You can set your values here. So this might be um, something like position equals 100. And then this name position, we can use that anywhere we want and it will put in 100 instead of having to type 100 every time. And then if we want to change it later and make it 105, we'd have to change it five times down here in this other code. We can just change it once up here and it'll throw it in there. So it's just a smart way to work. 
So function init, that's our first function. And uh, let's just leave that for now. The next function we need is a update function. So we'll say update like that. And, and then we'll go ahead and just draw this other one function draw. So these are really the three main functions that run in Pico 8 automatically. Init is ran once at the beginning of the program and it kind of sets things up. Then we have update. Update runs before it draws every frame. So this is 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second, depending on your settings. And so um, generally, if you want something to like do some math, do some calculation, uh, if you want it to think about something, you want that to happen in update. And then draw is the last thing that happens. And this is generally where you draw your sprites, where you tell it to actually do things on screen based on the math that happens in update. You could certainly probably do a bunch of math in draw if you wanted to, but it's good practice just to kind of do your math and update and do drawing things in draw. So let's pause here and make a sprite real quick. So let's go over here to our second tab. And I'm going to go ahead and get just kind of delete this. And now let's make a sprite. Let's make a little guy. And I'm just going to draw something really quick so that we can see. Here's our little guy. And he has hair like this. Okay, there's our little guy. Um, this is sprite one. We know that because it says 001 right here. And every sprite has a number. So if I click other squares here, we'll see there's different numbers and that's how you reference them in code. So this is sprite one. And so over here in our code, we're going to do something with sprite one. So to draw a sprite, I can type SPR and then parentheses and then the number one but then I'm gonna add a comma, and this is gonna be the X value of where I want the sprite. And so I'm gonna type 63 for now, and then I'll type 63 in this next one, which is the Y value. This screen is 128 by 128. So 63, 63 puts them right in the middle. So what this is gonna do when we run is it's gonna set position to 100, and then it's gonna draw a sprite at it's going to draw sprite one at 63, 63. So let's see if it works. Yep. Um, so here he is in the middle. You can see him over the system thing. And uh, that's almost what we want, except for we don't want all of this kind of leftover code in our runtime. So I'll just hit escape twice. So how do we clear the screen? So we put him on a blank screen. Well, here under draw, before we go into sprite, We'll type CLS, which is short for clear screen, and we'll just put two parentheses. This will clear the screen off and give us a black background. I'll also select this and hit tab to kind of bring these in to remind us that it's part of this function. And now when we run control R, we have them in the middle of the screen. That's cool. So now we're drawing a sprite, but you know, it's not much of a game if you can't do anything, right? So in our update function, let's go ahead and write some code that will let us move him around. Now, the way that we do that is that we we check if a button is pressed. So the way that we do that is we type BTN and then parentheses, and then we want to ask, so let's say the right button. Really cool thing in Pico, if you hit Shift R, that will give you a little right arrow and you don't have to remember the actual number of the button. You can just say shift R for shift, right? You can say shift L for left and it'll type in that little like emoji. And so now we have button right. And what this actually will do is this, this won't really run. Um, this is this here tests to see if we have button right pushed. And so actually what we need to do is say if button right, then, and then we tell it to do something. We also need an end right here for this if statement. So right here, this is where we can put anything that we want to happen if we're pushing button right, okay? So uh, let's just say button 
equals right like this. What this is doing is making a variable called button store this string, which is right. A string is just like words that are typed out, right? In init, we'll say button equals nothing like this. And so now on update, if we're holding the right button, we're going to set our, vari our variable to right, and then that's all we're going to do. This is just so we can kind of test and make sure our code's working. So now here under sprite, we'll just say print button. And let's just see if this works. I'll hit uh, control S for save and control R to run. And now if I hit the right button, we see it says right up there in the top. That means we did it right. Okay. So now anything that we put here is going to happen when we say button right. So what do we want to happen? Well, we want our sprite to move to the right, don't we? So the way that we do that is that we make a variable. And so a variable will be for his position. Okay, so here's position. Let's just use this, position 100. Let's actually switch this to position 63. And then here for sprite 1, instead of 63 right here, we're going to put position. Okay. So now nothing will change. If I hit save and run, nothing's going to change. But I can put code here to change this position when I hit button right. So we'll say position equals, let's say, 100. Okay. So I'll save and run. And now when I hit the right button, he jumps to 100 which isn't quite what we want, but at least we have something happening to our player when we say position 100. So let's actually say position plus equals one. What that does is that's going to take position and it's going to add one to it. The same, you could do the same thing by saying position equals position plus one. And then every frame, every time it says update, if I'm pushing button, uh, the, but the right button, then it's going to add one to positions. But for shorthand, we'll just say plus equals one, just like this. So now when I hit run and I hit right, I can move him to the right. But oh no, the left doesn't work. So what do we do? We just make these lines of code for left. So I'll hit control C and I'll return down a couple times and hit control V. And I'll just adjust this. And now instead of position right, we'll say shift L for left and then position minus equals one right here. And so what we're really doing is adjusting the X position of this sprite. X is left and right. And as we go to the right, it is a higher position. And as we go to the left, it's a lower position. So if we hit save and run and I can hit left and right and I can move my guy back and forth on screen. There we go. Look at that. So good. So that's really the basics of how it works. Uh, these are the main ideas uh, for how to make something interactive in Pico. You have your init function here, which sets things up. Then you have your update, which changes things every single frame. And then you have draw, which just draws the things that you've changed. And you'll notice that they go in order, right? So init happens once at the beginning, update happens, and then draw happens. And then update and draw happen every frame, and init doesn't happen anymore unless you call it randomly some other time, but automatically it just happens once. So let's clean up our code. We don't need button anymore. And it's also a good idea to uh, write down kind of notes to yourself on what you're doing. These are called comments and you draw and you write a comment by hitting two minus signs like this. And so we'll call this player movement. And I like to put two minus signs on the other side, just cause it looks nice. looks like a little, little title, right? You don't have to do that, but it's all about putting those at the beginning of a comment. So this won't be code. This is just kind of a note to yourself. And then um, let's not print button. We don't need to do that. 
And that's kind of our basic thing so far. So if we run this, we have a black screen, and every frame, if we're holding down left or right, it updates that variable and then it draws that sprite in that sprite's position, including that variable. So I hope you liked this video. If you want to learn more about Pico, go ahead and subscribe. That would be awesome.